marriage be a blessing. May your children surround your table. May you see your children's children. Thus says the Lord of hosts. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, sir. Thank you, pastor, for welcoming me to this altar. We are the redeemed members outside redeemed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, our subject is, please sir, be seated. Our subject is principles of marriage and family life. Principles. Principles are general laws applicable anywhere. Principles are general laws. You go to China, they are applicable. You go to Asia, they are applicable. You go to Israel, they are applicable. But for those principles to be applicable, they must be kingdom based. Because not every principle is kingdom based. Many times we don't understand that we belong to a kingdom. You are a citizen of a kingdom. And because you are a citizen of a kingdom, there are laws of the kingdom. There's so much nonsense going on now in the name of hyper grace doctrine. And people think it doesn't matter. Laws don't bind us. Yes, the ceremonial laws of the Old Testament, the ritualic laws of the Old Testament don't bind you. But there are laws that are principles. There are laws that are patterns. And except marriage is structured on the foundation of kingdom principles, we will not succeed in marriage. But you will succeed. I say you will succeed. Marriage is a ministry and couples are on assignment. Say it after me. That's the first kingdom principle I like to share. Marriage is a ministry, and ministry is all about rendering service. Couples are on assignment. This is not a revelation many people are aware of. Ask a man, Why do you want to marry? Some men will say, I want a woman to cook for me. My brother, if it's only because of a woman cooking for you, you don't need a wife. Mama put can cook for you. Am I saying that wives should not cook for their husbands? No. But there's something deeper. Ask a woman, why do you want to marry? Some women will say, I want a man to take care of me. My sister, if it's only because of a man taking care of you, then you don't need a husband because your father can take care of you and some fathers are taking care of their daughters better than husbands which is a shame am I saying that husbands should not take care of their wives no ask some people why do you want to marry I want children I want a boy particularly so that when I come back from work I'll throw him up and catch him bum boy Bon boy, nothing wrong with that but you can be a father without being a biological father you can be a mother without being a biological mother adoption is a legitimate option in fact when we got married my wife and I I, I told her please can we agree that the first child will be a girl she said I'm not agreeing with you I'm not agreeing with you Whatever the Lord gives me, I'll take. So the first boy came. Then after then I called, I said, can we agree that the next child will be a girl? She said, I'm not agreeing with you. Whatever the Lord gives me, I'll take. As far as I'm concerned, a child is a child. She was saying so because her mother had six children. And there was trouble in her marriage because there was no boy. As far as I'm concerned, a child is a child. That's how I ended up with five boys. Now, when they do food crusade for you, you know you need a girl in the house. It was later I asked God, why did you not give me a girl? He said, all your girls were supposed to be adopted. 
I say, oh my God, what ignorance. In other words, my ministry, as far as marriage was concerned, was to adopt girls. They don't understand. They walk about in darkness. And because they walk about in darkness, the foundations of the earth are unstable. You will not walk in darkness. So as part of marriage being a ministry and couples being an assignment, we began to do very strange adoptions. Not the regular adoption. The first girl that came, came as a house girl. As she entered, the Lord said, that is not a house girl. That is your daughter. So I called Hannah and said, Hannah, the Lord said, you're not a house girl. You are my daughter. So don't behave like a house girl in this house. And Hannah turned out to be fantastic. When you talk of faith, she's on top. When you talk of diligence, she's on top. You need to stop her from walking. When she is sick, she says, I believe that by his stripes, I was here. So what else am I looking for in a child? There was one we adopted. Or rather, I, I adopted. I, not my wife. Because she's my wife's niece. God said, that one is not your sister-in-law. That one is your daughter. From the time she was born, no man took responsibility. He denied. So we adopted. I can't forget about nine years ago in But that day the Lord said, read the text message. So I read the text message. It was from this girl. I did not know it was Father's Day. She sent me a text message. Happy Father's Day. You are the father I never had. I love you, Daddy. I started crying at the pulpit. For 10 minutes I was crying. My surprise was that church people joined me to cry, not knowing why I was crying. <laughs> They thought I was crying for their sin. I was not crying for their sin. I was crying for myself. I was crying that somebody who didn't come from my loins remembered me on Father's Day. All the boys, they forgot me. Marriage is a ministry and couples are on assignment. Marriage is not just a ministry. Marriage is a shadow reflecting a reality. Say it after me. Marriage is a shadow reflecting a reality. Isaiah 54 verse 5. Our maker is our husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. You know, God wanted to show us that physical marriage is only a shadow. That the reality is our relationship with him. For he's a master teacher. And as a master teacher, he uses physical things to teach us spiritual lessons. So he said, how do I teach these people that my relationship with them is a marriage? So he established the physical equivalent of the spiritual. Our maker is our husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. Help me look somebody to near you say, your maker is your husband. Pastor, you were saying it with boldness. Are you no more her husband? <laughs> You're still her husband. But there's somebody that is higher than you. Help me tell somebody your maker is your husband. Uh -uh. Mommy, you're looking at him and say his maker. So he's a wife in the realm of the spirit. So God was looking for a way of showing us that this relationship is a shadow and you need to understand for the shadow to become the way God wants it to be you need the revelation of the reality you know in the relationship between shadows and reality when reality has not manifested the shadow predominates when Jesus had not come in the flesh we used to bring goats and sheep to the temple to sacrifice but once he came in the flesh do we need goat or sheep here? Because the reality has come. The shadow has to be done away with. 
do you know why there is no marriage in heaven there is no marriage in heaven because this one is a shadow tell somebody marry well now because there is no marriage in heaven no there is no marriage between people in heaven when we go to heaven is there somebody going to heaven here at all all those believing God that are going to heaven wave your hand and shout hallelujah you remember in the vision of the redeemed Christian church of God that is number one making heaven when we get to heaven you won't even live in the same mansion with your husband or your wife she will live in her own mansion you will live in your own mansion when you see yourself on the streets of heaven you cannot call her darling if you dare it angel will block your mouth because in heaven we have one darling what is his name can you shout that name i didn't hear you that's why this one must be right in fact the degree to this to which this one is right will determine whether you will make heaven every husband is appointed a husband for the wife to help the wife make heaven every wife is appointed for the husband to help the husband make heaven it means therefore if one partner does not make it somebody may answer query hold your ear near somebody say did you hear that marriage is a ministry couples on assignment marriage is a shadow reflecting a reality marriage is a sign pointing to a destination say it after me marriage is a sign pointing to a destination if the signboard of the church is at the junction and as i'm coming i stop at the signboard I say, ladies and gentlemen, our topic is principles of uh, marriage. And I preach this sermon, there something will be wrong with my head. Am I right? Because that sign boy should point me to a destination. So physical marriage is a sign pointing us to the destination. The destination is our relationship with him. Our relationship with God was born out of four things. It was born out of fellowship friendship, intimacy intercourse, say it after me fellowship friendship, intimacy intercourse the community of the Godhead God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit they had this time of fellowship this time of friendship, this time of intimacy, this time of intercourse, they had it for, I can't use time to describe it, for a long time Notice that one day they said, well, what is this thing we're doing? What is this thing we're doing? How is it that we alone are enjoying fellowship, friendship, intimacy, intercourse? No, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, in his nature, in his character, so that they too will be creatures of friendship, fellowship, intimacy intercourse and notice that our relationship should be based on the basis of our creation marriage is not just a sign pointing to a destination marriage is an instrument of redemption say it after me marriage is an instrument of redemption in redemption something is lost and an agent of redemption is supposed to to leave the height of grace and glory and come down to the thing that is lost. In redemption, something is lost. And then there's an agent of redemption at a height of grace and glory. And that agent of redemption at a height of grace and glory is supposed to leave that height, come down, but you don't mess up with the thing that is lost. You pick up the thing that is lost so that where the agent of redemption is, that thing can be. Was that what Jesus did for us? He left the glory of heaven. 
he left the splendor of heaven he came down to the earth he did not mess up with us he picked us up so that where he is we also can be that's what a husband must do for the wife and that's what a wife must do for the husband there's something lost in every husband that only the wife can recover there's something lost in every wife that only the husband can recover there's something lost in church that husband and wife are supposed to help us recover there's something lost in the nation that husbands and wives are supposed to help us to recover but the mystery of redemption is that the agent of redemption is usually abused and accused by the very people they are sent to redeem I didn't hear you say amen I say it again that the mystery of redemption is that the agent of redemption is usually abused and accused by the very people they are sent to redeem let me be practical when we marry got married each time I'm teaching my wife is taking copious notes initially I say, ah, ah, is she taking an exam with this thing I'm saying she will take copious notes ah. one day as we came she said sit down I said down she said this word you didn't pronounce it properly that word you misused it I said it's not by grammar it's by anointing the Holy Spirit said take that in the way I sent you this girl to help you the agent of redemption is usually abused and accused by the very people they are sent to redeem but persist in your agency of redemption because just as it was with us we killed him we abused him we called him name but today we are worshippers of Jesus persist you see I'm giving us very practical concepts kingdom concepts of marriage marriage is a ministry couples are on assignment marriage is a shadow reflecting a reality marriage is a sign pointing to a destination marriage is an instrument of redemption but even more practical marriage is a union of two opposites say it after me marriage is a union of two opposites I don't need to know your wife all I need to know you if I know you for a short time I can describe your wife to you I don't need to know uh, your wife all I need to know is to know you or I don't need to know your husband all I need to know is to know you as a wife I can give you a description of your husband because most times you are usually opposite you may have the same vision you may have the same destination but oftentimes you have two routes of arriving at it many people say they are incompatible but not knowing that what they call incompatibility is what God calls divine arrangement church are you still with me at all let's be practical in some families the husbands are so quiet more quiet than pussycat their wives will not be another quiet woman. The wife will be like a woman from worry, gragra woman. Worry people, forgive me. Nobody passes without her. Stretch your imagination in the last dispensation of Asorok. I say, stretch your imagination in the last dispensation of Asorok. You saw a woman that was a uh, But after a while, the equation was a balance. In certain families, the men are so tight-handed that it will take a heavy anointing to lose five naira from their hand. I call them super glue hand. Aradite palm. But their wives will like to spend money whether the money is there or not. And they are contending, not knowing that God did them a favor. The day comes if they understand they strike an equilibrium the man is no longer as tight handed as he used to be the woman is no longer as frivolous as she used to be is that incompatibility or is that divine arrangement 
Now, when you understand these kingdom-based concepts of marriage, then you'll be able to apply the principles. And today, I'm only interested in the very first principles of marriage and family life. What are those first principles? The first principle can be seen in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and to keep it. For everyone here, there is a garden to tend and to keep. Help me preach. Tell somebody there is a garden for you to tend and to keep. No, you spoke to the air. Tell somebody there is a garden for you to tend and to keep. That means the first principle of marriage is purpose. Purpose. Dr. Miles Monroe happened to have had one of the greatest revelations of purpose. Miles Monroe said that God is a God of purpose. Everything in life has a purpose. Unfortunately, not all purpose is known. And where purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. If you don't know the purpose of a thing, you will abuse the thing. I schooled at the University of Ibadan. That's where I did graduate work. Those days, schools were schools. Schools were what they used to they ought to be. At the graduate level, we lived in the same hostel with females. Just a different word. We had rooms to ourselves. I walked into the room of the woman who is my wife now. We were friends at that time. I saw a bag. I felt it was a beautiful bag. I do a lot of writing. So I put my pen into the bag and for about two weeks I was posing the whole campus with the bag. You know sometimes a man puts his leg on the stool. He's shaking it. He's not shaking it for any reason. He wants you to know that he's wearing a new shoe. So I was posing with this bag until one of our lecturers who happened to be our friend those days lecturers were our friends. God will restore education in Nigeria. Dr. King Tap Prince Way called me and said, Rusty, I've seen you walking about this campus for two weeks now with this bag. Why are you walking about the whole campus with toilet bag? <laughs> Yours truly, I did not know there was a special bag only meant to be used in the toilet. So that was toilet bag abuse. There is husband abuse, there is wife abuse, there is child abuse because we don't know purpose if you ever go to heaven and your spouse is not there with you it means that you failed or something happened that's the ultimate purpose where purpose is not known abuse is inevitable there's a garden for everyone here to tend and to keep there's a garden for every family and to discover that garden whatever you're passionate about is an indication of your purpose because passion is usually tied up to purpose whatever problems you have ever had is an indication of the problem your family is supposed to take out of society two of our books won an award in East Africa in 2004 how to beat your husband and how to beat your wife during the award ceremony an American on family TV that is the local station of the TBN station we watch here asked me why is it that you teach on leadership you teach on intercession but we notice that most of the books you have written are in the area of marriage and family life why is that so? I said it's because the area of marriage and family life is the area of my mess. So I'm turning my mess into my message. May God use you to turn every mess in your life into your message. As a child, I did not live with my mother. I didn't live with my father. My father later. I live with uncles and aunties. Sometimes I'm hungry. I can't tell anybody I'm hungry because I don't know how they will feel. I am sick. I can't tell them I'm sick because I don't know how they will feel. The best time of my life 
is when I am alone. It has not changed. It's a foundation I had to deal with. At least, but this is still the best time of my life. Nobody did bad days for me. Nobody hugged me to say, I love you. So when I grow up, this mess in my life will become my message. That's why it doesn't matter what you give me to teach. Politics, economics, huh? I will smuggle in family. So I'm turning my mess into my message. The very area you have been hurt is where God wants you to use to heal other people. There's a purpose for every union. A man picked up a prostitute and was going to mess up with her. As he was driving to the hotel room, he looked at her on the road. She was so beautiful. She was so young. As beautiful as his own daughter. He was convicted. He asked her, why are you involved in prostitution? She said, it's because I don't have a father. I don't have a mother. And I have five brothers and sisters to take care of. And I don't know how to take care of them. He parked his car by the road and looked at her and said, if I sent you to train in an area, will you stop prostitution? She said, yes, sir. He didn't take her to the hotel room that day. He drove her and drove her back, dropped her arranged to send her to UK to train for the nursing profession for two years paid all her fees while she was gone he gave his life to Christ and one day he was praying God what's the purpose of God for my life what's the purpose of God for my family why did you create me God said to him I thought you should know by now whoever unites himself with a prostitute is a prostitute you know, this God has a sense of new humor. He said, I have my people in the prostitution industry who is better equipped to reach out to them than you that used to unite yourself with prostitutes. That's why I say where you have hurt him is where he will use you to bring healing to your generation. So he started a ministry reaching out to prostitutes. He will go with his family, win them, bring them to a rehabilitation center, rehabilitate them. After a while, the ministry grew. He began to pray, Lord, send me laborers. Send me laborers. God said to him, I sent you a little girl long ago. You thought you were the one who didn't mess up with her, but I restrained you. You know, when we don't mess up, it's not always because of us. It's because of his restraining influence. That's why my greatest prayer, Lord, lead me not into temptation. Because it's not by power, it's not by mind, it's by my spirit. You sent her to school. She is back. She's in the north. She's married with children. Why not send for her and her husband to join you in this ministry? So they sent for them and they joined them in the ministry. Their mess became their message. Can you lift up your hand and say, My Father and my God? I didn't hear you, my Father and my God turn every mess in my life into the message of my family listen Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 19 is a very interesting scripture Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 19 it says the very place you have been put to shame is where God will establish your fame the very area you have been put to shame is where God will establish your fame. Purpose is central. Remember, it is the purpose that defines the vision. And where there's no vision, what happens? People perish. That's why, sir, if I'm conducting a marriage, as part of my preparation of the people, you must write the vision. Because the vision is the reason why you're coming to the altar. And on the day of the wedding, I insist as part of the wedding, the man or the woman will read the vision to the witnesses. We are coming to get married because this, this, this is what we want to do for God. Where there is no vision, the people perish. If you understand that is the purpose behind your union, you won't beat each other. You won't fight each other. 
even if you have a disagreement you will look for a way of settling it because there is a mission behind your marriage there is a reason for which God brought you together and that reason is not the mundane reason remember Matthew 6 33 seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness all other things shall be added unto you because of our time second principle Genesis chapter 2 verse uh, 16 Genesis chapter 2 verse 16 and the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden ye may freely eat the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden you may freely eat that means eating freely is a commandment oh somebody here will eat freely lift up your hand and say I will eat freely my family will eat freely my children will eat freely so God gives purpose but God also gives the principle of provision the key is that the provision is not isolated if you fulfill purpose then there will be provision eating freely is a commandment and that commandment will be obeyed by those who have a purpose that's why young girls that are here shine your eye well because I hear a nonsense teaching that love is blind tell somebody now your love is not blind the Bible says God is love so if love is blind it means that God is blind shine your eye well I, I don't know whether some of our daughters they have fish brain or whether they have human brain I don't see anybody here with fish brain. You didn't say amen. amen. Don't worry, don't worry. I will provide the money for the wedding. In fact, I will give you money to pay my bride price. Somebody shout of fear. You will give him money to pay your own bride price. Will you marry yourself? Don't worry. And sometimes you see he's lazy, he's careless, and he does things that are abnormal. He borrows money from you who he wants to marry. That's abnormal. Because you're sending the wrong signal. And he borrows from you and he refuses to pay. He said, I forgive you, I forgive you. Something is wrong with your head. I came to correct it this Sunday morning. You see, he is verbally abusive. It doesn't matter. What did Jesus say? By their fruit, we shall. Know. I will change him, I will change him. I said yesterday, you cannot change any man. There is no relationship between light and darkness. There is no agreement between the children of God and the children of Belial. And he made the mistake of one day abusing you. And he said, I'm sorry, it was a mistake. And then he made the mistake of one day slapping you. He's slapping you, but I still love him. He's slapping you, but I really still love him. No, you don't love him, you love slap. And you will get it in abundant quantity if you marry him. By their fruit, we shall know them. I'm tired of crying in counseling's time. I'm tired of cry, crying. I'm crying because a marriage of two years, broken. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And a son is not a child. A child is ignorant. A child doesn't know his left and right. Galatians chapter 4 verse 1 says, and hair for as long as he remains a child does not differ from a slave even though he's master of all and many people are children you don't pick up signals but I challenge you I challenge you I'm not saying a man may have everything today he may not have anything today but he can have everything tomorrow and the potentials is usually visible. He's hardworking. He's diligent. He's devoted. 
committed both for men and women and you men she comes to you bro okay have you heard that iphone 20 has come out when are you going to buy me iphone 20 may you run away from that girl Look at the third principle because of our time. Genesis chapter 2 verse 17. But of the knowledge of good, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For the day you eat, you shall surely die. What's that? Prohibition. Prohibition. Remember, there is purpose. There is provision. There is also what? Prohibition. There are certain things that are prohibited. Premarital sex is prohibited. Can I hear a good amen? amen? And it doesn't matter. You can get the signal. He calls you at 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. He says, Sister Ada, I was thinking of you and all my body was on fire. May you not receive that strange fire. Anybody awake at that time should be praying or studying scripture, not to call another person. Then he comes to you. I, I, you know, there are lines that men used to, 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 to win some women strangely. One of the lines is promise, promise line. Somebody say, promise, promise line. I will take you on holiday to Honolulu. You follow them to Honolulu. You become pregnant and you become a Honolulu fool. Look at any young girl who is not married near you. Tell her, don't be a Honolulu fool. There was a young girl from Cameroon. She was indigent. Her family was indigent. And she was intelligent. So, village contributed money to send her to the University of Makerere. Long ago, when schools were schools, she was to study a diploma there but she got there and started doing boyfriend and girlfriend and became pregnant the university expelled her then universities were universities she came back to the village in Cameroon and they were waiting for her when she delivered they called the baby diploma yeah, because she went to get the original diploma and did not get the original and get a counterfeit diploma. You know, Proverbs chapter 6 says that Proverbs chapter 6 it, it, it says that a man that commits adultery or fornication lacks understanding. A wound and dishonor shall he get and his reproach shall not be wiped away. Now, it's not that God can't forgive you. God will forgive you. But there are certain reproaches that cannot be wiped away. After they call the baby diploma, guess what name they continue to call the mother? Mama diploma. He that commits adultery or fornication lacks understanding. A wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. There are prohibitions. There is a prohibition. Husband, don't beat your wife. Wife, don't beat your husband. Some women are looking at me. Yes, there are women that beat their husbands. I don't have the time to go into that now. Some of the women do not beat with fists, they beat with their mouth respect one another honor one another men do you know what it took for these good women to marry you do you know what it took they left their father's house dropped their father's name and sometimes their father's name is better than your name which you gave them it's true it's true okay even though my time is up now, look, she used to be Miss Joy Goodman. Miss Joy Goodman. Goodman is a good name, am I right? Now she has to answer Mrs. Joy Wankita. Wow, go. 
Uruari, devil's house. That's why, as part of the principles, the men are the givers. The women are the receivers. But when they receive, they multiply what you give. Every woman deserves three sets of allowances as part of the principle of your giving. The first allowance is hair making allowance. I know a man is questioning my theology. Eh? I know he's asking, where is it in the Bible? I'll show you. I, I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of every woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. So the head of every woman is the man. Uh, women, shake your head like this. The head I see shaking is not your own. Oh, it is your husband. So she, should he not take care of the hair on his head? So to celebrate this Jubilee family week, all the excellent men that will give their wives hair making allowance from today stand up on your feet you will give your wife hair making allowance stand now keep standing keep standing something new has started in the house something new has started in the family let me show you the protocol see the protocol every good woman makes her hair at least twice in the month those that make more than twice this allowance doesn't cover the extra one twice see what you will do tomorrow take out an envelope take out some money put in the envelope then on it write hair making allowance then underneath the envelope put a prayer request our mom is will you people pray <laughs> father as this man follow this tradition lord i'm asking that every door that has been closed to them let the door be open <laughs> now please don't do it carelessly do it during family devotion i hope there's a family devotion at that time make an announcement say children something new has started in this family i will be giving your mother hair making allowance you know why you do that you're discipling the sons to also give their wives hair making allowance so a good tradition begins may a good tradition begin in your family sit down let me close now notice prohibitions are fundamental if we will make eternity with God then prohibitions must be heeded anyone who doesn't heed the prohibition it cannot go to heaven then finally Genesis chapter 2 verse 18 and the Lord God said it is not good that the man should be alone I will make for him and help me what's that partnership somebody say partnership now let's tie it up God gave the man purpose he was fulfilling purpose tending and keeping the garden God gave him provision that enables him to eat freely he was eating freely God gave him a prohibition of this particular tree. Don't eat the fruit. He was the one that pruned the branches. If he needed manure, he put the manure. And the, the tree blossomed with fantastic fruit, but he didn't touch it. So God said, oh, this man, I gave him the principle of purpose, his fulfilling purpose. I gave him the principle of provision that enables him to eat freely. He's eating freely. I gave him prohibition that he shouldn't eat this fruit. He is heeding my prohibition. So I want to bless him now with a partner. And what's the purpose of the partner? To ensure that their agency of redemption is fulfilled. Put in another context. 
Genesis chapter 15. And the Lord God took the man, put him in the garden of Eden to tend and to keep it. Walk. Every family has work to do for God. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat wage. When you walk, God gives you a wage. Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall know it for the day you eat, you shall surely die. Warning. And so the man was walking. He had a wage. He heeded warning. So God said, I'm going to give him a wife. Everybody say, walk. Demonstrate. Walk. Wage. Warning. Wife. One more time. Walk. Wage. Warning. Why? So a man that has no work to do for God does not deserve a wife. A man who cannot eat freely should not bring another person's daughter to punish her in his house. A man who does not heed prohibitions, he doesn't like the warnings of God, cannot take a wife. And the the entire principles surround things like prayer, forgiveness, and the other things. Because if you don't forgive, you will not be forgiven. The key is that we need to go back to God. That's the key. Let me close with a testimony. A man married a woman, and the woman came into her home. She wanted to go into her room to get a basket. As she opened the door, what did she see? She saw her husband on top of another woman having sex. May that never happen in any person's family. The first thing she said was, Lord, what do I do? Some people will not ask, Lord, what do I do? Some people will know what to do immediately. They will go and get the sharpest butcher's knife kill the man, kill the woman. Some people will even kill themselves. There is a way that seems right unto man but it is the way of destruction. The end is destruction. She said, Lord, would I, what will I do? The Lord said, don't say a word. Close the door. She went to a neighbor, collected basket and went to market. Cooked for the husband. She couldn't sit on the table to eat with him but the Holy Spirit said, go and sit on the table eat with him but don't say a word. That night he went into sleep. She couldn't sleep on the bed. She lay on the couch but the Holy Spirit said go into that room. Lie on the bed with your husband but don't say a word. By the end of the week guilt was already in him. You know a broken reed shall he not break. Many of the people know what they are doing. There's no need breaking them any further. A smoking flax shall he not quench. It's a principle. By the end of the week, he drove to the wise pastor. He wasn't a worshiper, but he knew where the wife worshipped. He knew the pastor. He got to the pastor and said, Pastor, please don't be offended. I am the man whose wife came to tell you about something that happened in their home. He couldn't tell. The pastor said, you... you I know you, you're not a member of this church, but your wife has been here. She's been here on Sunday. She didn't tell me anything happened. She's been here on Wednesday. She didn't say anything happened. When that man heard that the wife didn't say anything to him or to anybody, he went on his knees and said, Pastor, please pray for me so that the God my wife worships, I will worship that God. He did not just give his life to Christ. He's a pastor in a new guru. He does not deal with us according to our sins. Neither does he punish us according to our iniquities. As a father pities his children, so he pities us. He knows our frame. He remembers that we are mere dust. As he is, so are we in this world. By your hands, let's pray. Can you talk to him? Can you ask him? Lord, help me. I can't be a husband. I can't be a wife without you. It's in you I live. It's in you I move. It's in you I